Underwater Odyssey of the semi wretched General. This whole story is like a patchwork kilt, collected from random encounters, wonderful episodes in different countries. Unusual, colorful and mysterious, like a medieval map created by the Spanish master Crescius. This temple was depicted on the famous Catalan map. The drawing was signed as follows, a place called Isikul, a monastery of the Armenian brothers. The temple, which people are looking for almost two centuries, and the world secret of 2,000 years ago. The Catalan map indicates that it has the relics of the apostle of the evangelist Matthew. What kind of data did Semenov Tianshansky find in Venice? And what did General Kolpakovsky find at the bottom of Isikul? How did the tests of the submarine end and where is the medieval monastery of the Armenian brothers? Underwater Odyssey of the semi wretched General. The relics are what is there. This is even stated on the map. The Catalan Atlas has not yet been fully read, so to speak. Kolpakovsky was a major traveler, a researcher of the problems of Turkestan. Chapter 1. Treasure Map It all started like this. A young student at the University of Berlin, Peter Semenov, the future Tian Shansky, had a scientific trip to Venice. When I was in Venice in the early 1850s on the famous Catalan map, which was preserved there, I saw an image of Lake Isikul for the first time. On the north side there was a monastery of Nestorian Christians who fled, as is known, from the Middle East, Syria, and so on, into the depths of Asia. Peter Semenov Tianshensky. After five years, the traveler on behalf of the Russian Geographical Society was sent to explore the mountain system of Tianshen. And it's not by chance the expedition's route coincides with the object that interested him on the Catalan map. It is very ancient Armenian church. According to the legend, there were relics of St. Matthew. By the way, before the scientific caravan to Isikul was accompanied by the Lieutenant Valikhanov, the mysterious monastery of Semenov Tianshansky was never found. But he told about it to the future government of the region, Gerasim Kolpakovsky. As an adjutant to Gasford back in the 50s of the 19th century, he arrived in Western Siberia on the steppe territory. In all the positions he held, Kolpakovsky rendered unforgettable services to his motherland. Semyonov Tianshansky commented on him. Administration of the city of Verny. The third from left to right is Kolpakovsky. Gerasim Kolpakovsky, the first Ataman and the first governor of our land. And you can say the first underwater archaeologist. News of some of the buildings under the water of Isikul was reported to the administration earlier by the merchants passing by this route. But it was with the story of Semenov Tianshansky about the Catalan map that the story acquired a special mystery. Chapter 2, Catalan Mystery. Strange, but the inscription on the Catalan map is the only mention of the Armenian monastery in Isikul. And Kolpakovsky and other researchers did not find some sources that tell about the church with the relics of St. Matthew. At the same time, medieval travelers noted that Christianity was quite common in the territory of the modest Semirecha and the great steppe in general. Rubruk writes about Christian churches near the city of Kailak. Rubruk, he went to church. He was surprised to see the church there, in which he finally prayed to his Christian God. I saw a house above there was a cross, then greatly rejoiced, and assuming that there would be something Christian, I entered with confidence, 
and found an altar that was beautifully decorated. One Armenian monk was sitting there, thin, dressed in a very tough, clumpy tunic. Guliam de Rubruk, Journey to the Eastern Countries. Rubruk, being a monk himself, wanted to convert the Mongols to Christianity. In addition, there were already Christians of the Nestorian direction. Stories of medieval authors confirm archaeological finds. We know about different Christian Kairat tombstones in the territory of Semirecha, from the territory of Al Malik. We are aware of the existence of several cathedrals and several monasteries. The author of the Catalan Atlas was familiar, of course, with the works of Rubruk and other travelers. In medieval Europe, the report of this monk and the diaries of Marco Polo, one might say, became bestsellers. Therefore, Kresks believed the information about the monastery on the distant Issacal to be true. But from whom did the Spanish cartographer hear this information? How the image of the monastery in which the relics of the Apostle Matthew were kept appeared on the Catalan map is not exactly known. According to one of the versions, cartographers learned about its existence from the merchants who transported goods along the Great Silk Road. In the 80s of the last century, the famous scientist Maxim Kovalevsky went to Barcelona, Valencia and Parma. He went deep into the study of ancient papers. The old acts stored in the archive had information about Tartars, Bulgars, Armenians, Greeks and Circassians. Sergei Markov, the Earth Circle. It should be noted that the time of the creation in 1375, for many years after, this map was called the one of the most reliable documents. The Catalan Atlas shows the city of Sarai and many other cities. Everyone finds something of his own in it. But if the presence of the Armenian church in the Issachal are true, then how can the presence of the remains of the Holy Apostle in the monastery be explained? This is due to the spread of Christianity over a vast territory. After all, we actually know from the first centuries how Christ commanded his disciples to go and preach. So they walked to long distances and they preached. Researchers refer mainly to scripture. According to it, the relics were kept in Syria and after the persecution of Christians in the middle of the third century, believers moved the remains to the saint to the east. The Great Steppe has always been famous for its tolerance. The legend is never born from scratch. I say every legend, every myth has some basis. So even a hypothetical opportunity to find such a shrine interested Kolpakovsky. Chapter 3, In the Footsteps of Nautilus. In the cosy living room of the military governor, an extremely interesting conversation for that time was held. Underwater divers, medieval maps and treasures were discussed. At the end of the 60s of the 19th century, the city of Verni Almaty, preparation of the Issacal expedition. Kolpakovsky really was a member of the Imperial Society of Amateurs of Natural Science, Ethnography and Anthropology. At that time, several geographic expeditions had already been to the region itself. There were even attempts to excavate, but without success. It was Kolpakovsky who took the first steps to study the underwater ruins of Isikul. In 1869, the military government of the semi recha region went to the lake. He's an officer in the military ministry. Therefore, he was both a scout and a traveler. This archaeological flight was quite successful. Two bronze cauldrons and silver coins were found. A year later, Kolpakovsky published a note about them. Published in the Journal of the Russian Geographical Society. 
The military governor also wrote about what he saw under the water area, covered with bricks, fragments of dishes and bones. It was then that the idea was born to produce an underwater research. During an earthquake, the monastery went under the water, and one of the versions says that it's possible that the relics of the evangelists are still there. On November the 3rd, 1871, Kolpakovsky sent artifacts to the Governor General Kaufman to Tashkent. A letter was attached to them. From the letter of Kolpakovsky, Every year, the mysteriousness of Isikol gets more complicated, which makes me reiterate the idea of the need for research. This is just about the underwater cities. Kaufman approved the idea. Together with his brother Ivan, Kolpakovsky gathered a team of like-minded people. To begin with, they decided to build a special vessel. Surprisingly at the time, Jules Verne wrote a fantastic novel about the adventures of Captain Nemo on the submarine Nautilus. On the distant shores of Isikul, Kolpakovsky is trying to make a fairy tale come true. The British were involved in the construction of the submarine. Norman was among them. He was an engineer. He was also known in these places. George was a machinist. John Norman and Emil George actually did build a submarine. Unfortunately, neither the drawings nor the descriptions of this amazing invention have been preserved. The researchers intended to rebuild or specially design the vessel for underwater exploration, but everything turned out quite differently as planned. The first test nearly ended tragically. The homemade submarine sank. Only miraculously, underwater archaeologists were saved. Then they decided to purchase diving suits with the help of Governor General Kaufman. The head of Turkestan region appealed to the military engineer Zverev. He led the construction of Kronstadt. Would you find it possible to instruct someone to collect information about what a diving device will cost and under what conditions you can find someone to come to the local region? The purpose of the invitation is primarily archaeological research. In this case, a capable person, strong and a non-drinker, is needed. From a letter from Kaufman to Zverev. In response, Veros advised them to buy the latest diving equipment, which was presented at the Paris World Exhibition in 1867. This technological innovation was even awarded a gold medal, but it cost a lot of money. However, for some time, Kolpakovsky brothers tried to conduct research with the help of regular boat. Then, underwater archaeological excavations were made. Unfortunately, Kolpakovsky did not succeed in solving the riddle of the Catalan map. There was no money for the diving suit and the submarine sank, and official matters did not allow the general to fully immerse in his favorite work. Up to his departure to St. Petersburg in 1889, Kolpakovsky did not stop trying to find a medieval monastery. Epilogue. The search continues and there's still no direct evidence of where the temple was located. There is a version of the Arministrum Monastery was built in the Kermatinsky Bay. Everyone is trying to find it. Scientists come, ordinary people who are interested in this, but no one has found anything yet. According to another hypothesis, the Armenian church may be underwater in the region of the Bright Cape. Here, according to the Kyrgyz academician Plosky, an object measuring two by five kilometers was discovered. Another hypothesis, the temple was located in the caves on the shores of Lake Isikul. Or maybe it was ruined. Or maybe the monks in the monastery were hidden somewhere in the mountains or took it with them. So, the search continues. Truly, it is the Atlantis of Central Asia. The mystery entices the minds of researchers to this day.